There are more chairs for anybody who's standing and would like to sit. There are some more chairs to the side. We're live. Wonderful. Okay. Good evening, everyone. My name is Patty Bannister. I am the Provincial Archivist and Director here at Nova Scotia Archives. You're going to have to project. I will project. <laughs> It is my great pleasure to welcome you all here this evening, and a special welcome to those who are joining us via live streaming. This is a Nova Scotia Archives first that we are going live for one of our events, so we're thrilled to be able to be doing this. I would like to begin by recognizing that we are gathered this evening on the traditional territory and ancestral homeland of the Mi'kmaq people. Our relationship is based on a series of peace and friendship treaties, which we are honored to serve as the caretakers of in this very building. We pay our respect to the Mi'kmaq people and recognize in Nova Scotia, we are all treaty people. I would also like to take this time to recognize the presence of people of African descent in Nova Scotia for over 400 years. We honor and offer gratitude to our ancestors who came to this land and their commitment to not let our history be lost. Today is August 15th, which provides us with a unique opportunity to recognize the Acadian community on this National Acadian Day. Happy National Acadian Day, everyone. I am struck by how fitting it is to have these acknowledgments at the beginning of an event to celebrate the work of Helen Creighton. It is through her work that significant elements of the culture and heritage of these and many other Nova Scotia communities has been preserved. <clears throat> Uh, the launch of this re resource is actually a culmination of work that began in 2019 for many of the team who are here with us this evening at the archives. But in reality, the relationship of the archives to Helen Creighton, her work, family and friends actually began in the 1940s when she recognized the importance of having a trusted place for the preservation of what she was collecting. Helen's relationship with provincial archivist Dr. Phyllis Blakely carried through countless additions to the material over more than six decades. Helen's second book, Traditional Songs from Nova Scotia, was dedicated to provincial archivist D.C. Harvey. Carmen Carroll was the last provincial archivist to work personally with Helen and also saw the start of Clary Croft's extensive work on her accumulated materials. Clary was both Helen's friend and her trusted legacy keeper, a role that he continues to uphold in his own work and in support of the work that we have undertaken here at the archives. I'm now going to ask Clary to come to the podium for a Helen Creighton approved start to our event. Clary. Upchilasi, bienvenue, welcome, 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 all languages in which Helen Creighton collected. An amazing legacy. Moonlight tonight, boy, starlight tonight. Moonlight shines on the water When you are a dreaming mother When you are a dreaming mother When you are a dreaming mother Don't forget to dream of me Moonlight, starlight, moonlight, 
it shines so bright. Moonlight tonight, boy, starlight tonight. Moonlight shines on the water. Moonlight tonight, boy, starlight tonight. Take your sweetheart out for a stroll. Mind what you say, boys, mind what you tell her. Tell her how you'll court her when the night grows cold. Moonlight, starlight, moonlight shines so bright. Moonlight tonight, boys, starlight tonight. Moonlight shines on the water. Moonlight, starlight, moonlight shines so bright. Moonlight tonight, boys, starlight tonight. Moonlight shines on the water. Lovely. Gordon Connolly of Glen Haven sang that song for Helen Creighton in the year I was born, 1950. Before I continue, I should apologize for the dark glasses. I've had a little bit of surgery, and the eye is not pretty that it's normally handsome. <laughs> the interesting thing about that song is that Mr. Connolly told Helen it was a song that was sung when people were leaving port, when they were starting on an adventure when they were launching a new and exciting thing. I can't think of anything more new and exciting for me as Helen's friend and the person that had the great privilege of working here at the Public Archives, cataloging her entire collection. Helen would be overjoyed. I'm literally over the moon because now Helen's collection is going to be available literally internationally. People will be using this collection as they have for years. Now they'll be using it on the international stage as well. But for me, I do have to say that the most important thing about having this collection go live and having it accessible to everybody is a lesson that Helen taught me. When I started to do my own collecting, Helen said, Remember, Clary, you are the student. They are the teacher. The tradition bearers that shared with Helen. There would be no collection if it wasn't for the tradition bearers. And I'm very delighted to say we have some family members whose ancestors were collected by Helen. If you are one of those family members, put up your hands and let us see who you are. Ah, yes, yes. See, so if you get a chance, buttonhole those people and find out what it was like <laughs> to have Helen Creighton come to their community and collect. So in honoring this event, I think for me, perhaps the most important part is that we are honoring the tradition bearers. We all know the name of Helen Creighton but it's tradi tradition bearers who shared with her their legacy and Helen's will live forever. And I can't be more proud than I am of the work that the staff has done here at the archives and the work that's been done in liaison with the archives by uh, the Helen Creighton Folklore Society of which I am a founding member and a proud board member. And I thank you all for coming and I, if I am flying off two feet off the ground this afternoon, it's because I am absolutely elated, and I thank you all very much. Thank you, Clary. In getting to know Helen Creighton, which has been part of this journey for us here at the archives, we quickly came to recognize the importance of family to Helen. In both her work and her personal life, 
Her family was at the center of what inspired and supported her constantly. Helen's family, represented by Mickey's Inc., has been that same support and inspiration for us here at the archives throughout this project. I would like to invite Mickey to come to the podium to say a few words. That's not working, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, for those who don't know me, my name is Mickey Zink. Helen Creighton is my great aunt and godmother, and I'm honored to be the trustee of the Helen Creighton Royalties Trust and a board member of the Helen Creighton Folklore Society. Today I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to the Nova Scotia Archives staff for their exceptional dedication in bringing the Helen Creighton collection into the digital age. Aunt Helen's mission was to ensure our heritage endured. She collected the materials to be shared and remembered by future generations and not fade into obscurity. And the Nova Scotia Archives team has wholeheartedly embraced this vision. By digitizing her collection, they've made sure her legacy lives on accessible to all. On behalf of the Creighton family, I wish to convey our sincere appreciation for their hard work and commitment. Thank you to the Archives staff and volunteers and the tradition bearers on Helen's collection at the Nova Scotia Archives has found a new home in the modern world, bridging the past with the future and preserving our heritage for generations to come. Bravo. Thank you, Mickey. As you have already heard, this has been an archival journey the starting point of which was the realization that with many of the recording formats deteriorating significantly and types of playback equipment slipping into extinction, the songs, stories, and cultural elements that Helen worked to preserve were about to experience a second loss. Not dissimilar to the passing away of tradition and knowledge bearers in communities, the passing away of these recordings would similarly result in loss and silence. With preservation at the forefront of our thinking, we had the recordings digitized, thus ensuring that they would continue to exist. But existence isn't always the same thing as living. For several decades now, people have sporadically referenced and used portions of these recordings, even in their original formats. They had almost become the stuff of folklore themselves, with people saying things like, I heard you have the Helen Creighton recordings over there. <laughs> From preservation, we challenged ourselves with the support and friendship of Clary and Mickey to focus on access. How do we make these materials accessible to everyone, everywhere? How do we promote it, especially in the many communities from which it came? That was a much longer road. In retrospect, digitization was the easy part. The digitized recordings had to be prepared for use via our website to allow users of the resource to find a specific track, the recordings had to be timestamped. The time stamping activity is something that many of you in this room probably had a hand in, as many members of the Folklore Society took this on as a COVID lockdown project. In the end, it was Clary himself who was the lead contributor and even added additional notes as he worked his way tirelessly through the time stamping of the majority of the recordings. In some ways, the most important part of the post-digitization activity was reconnecting the, rec the recordings with Helen's field notes, photographs, and other materials to place them back in the context in which they were originally collected. This return of context, along with increased accessibility, 
is what we believe we have achieved with this resource. It is our hope that it will be embraced and used by many so that it will not just exist, but also live. We are celebrating this evening. As part of that, we will have music, even more music, and the opportunity for people to come together and share stories, reminiscences, and maybe find inspiration for new work. As I have said, this project was a long time coming, and in that time, our collaborators have become even closer friends. To Clary and Mickey, we offer our thanks for your openness and constant support. To John Stone and the other members of the Helen Creighton Folklore Society, thank you for both your help and your patience as it took time, far more time than we thought it would, to get this right. I am the person who gets to stand up here and proudly represent Nova Scotia Archives. But I can only do that because of the incredible team of people who I have the pleasure of working with every day. Your dedication, creativity, and drive to always do better is a gift. I am often heard to describe us as small but mighty. We are small in number, but mighty in how we pull together toward a common goal. Every member of this small staff team contributes in some way when we do a project and launch like this. Even if you don't have a hand directly in building the resource or in preparing for the event, you are covering other tasks for someone else so that they can be freed up to help. While I try to say thank you on a daily basis, I appreciate having a public opportunity like this to acknowledge with great gratitude everything that you have all given towards this project and that you give to the archives daily. Thank you. And now, I invite you to enjoy the music that's going to happen in the gallery space, the refreshments that are surrounding you in the lobby and in this room, and to take the time to explore the resource on one of the terminals that we have set up for this evening. There are also bookmarks available all over the place that have the URL for the resource on it. So please make sure you take one of these with you so that you can continue your exploration of the resource at home. Thank you all very much and enjoy your evening. Uh Carry and crow sat on an oak to me and come kitty come kaimo. Watching a tailor mend his cloak to me and come kitty come kaimo. Kaimo nero kitty come kiro. Kaimo nero kaimo. Pop 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 billy illy and come come kitty come kaimo. Bring me my arrow and my bow to me and come kitty come kaimo. So I might shoot that carry and crow to me and come kitty come kaimo. Kaimanero, kitty come kiro, Kaimanero, Kaimo, Bop, 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 Billy, Billy, and come, and come, kitty come, Kaimo. The old man fired, he missed his mark, to me and come, kitty come, Kaimo. He shot the old sow through the heart, to the and come, kitty come, Kaimo. Kaimanero, kitty come, kiro, Kaimanero, Kaimo. Bop, 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 billy, billy, and come and come, kitty come, Kaimo. Bring me some lasses in a spoon to me and come, kitty come, Kaimo. So I might heal that old sow's wound to me and come, kitty come, Kaimo. Kaimanero, kitty come, Kiro. Kaimanero, Kaimo. Bop, 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 billy, billy, and come and come, kitty come, Kaimo. So now the old sow's dead and gone. To me and come, kitty, come, Kaimo. Her little ones go waddling on. To me and come, kitty, come, Kaimo. 
Kai Manero, kitty come Kiro, Kai Manero, Kai Mo, Ba 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 Billy Lee and come, come kitty come Kai Mo, Kai Manero, kitty come Kiro, Kai Manero, Kai Mo, Ba 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 Billy Lee and come, in come kitty come Kai Mo, Carrie and Crow. <laughs> Thank you for your patience while I got the book. What? Uh, you guys Or uh, you could do uh, swing your tail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know that. Okay. No. No. We'll bring it anyway. Bring it anyway. Marketing. <laughs> what are you doing? A, a shanty? We're gonna do, we're gonna do uh, swing your tail. Oh, mm. cool. Uh, Kella, Helen Creighton collected quite a few sea shanties, uh, that is, work songs of the sea. Um, and uh, uh, there's a, actually a whole double CD of those, if you care to look it up and, and research. Uh, there is one called Swing Your Tail. When you anchor in any kind of a tidal flow, um, if, if you're not at the dock and you're out at an anchorage, the tide comes in, the tide goes out, and the ship twice will swing about. Yes, twice a day. The, shi the ship will swing about. And the whole substance of this song is that you should mind how you swing your tail. <laughs> Otherwise, that happens. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> Swing your tail and a swing your tail. Mind how you swing your tail. Swing last night and the night before. Mind how you swing your tail. Well, one day the blackbird said to the crow, Mind how you swing your tail. What makes you love your farmer so? Mind how you swing your tail. Well, that's my trade since I've been born. Mind how you swing your tail. A scratching and a digging up the farmer's corn. Mind how you swing your tail. Sing and heave and heave and sing. Mind how you swing your tail. Heave and make them hand spike spring. Mind how you swing your tail. When we gets to the Liverpool docks. Mind how you swing your tail. Them pretty little girls will come in flocks. Mind how you swing your tail. And one to the other you'll hear them say. Mind how you swing your tail. Here comes Johnny with two years pay. Mind how you swing your tail. So now our payday soon will come. Mind how you swing your tail up paradise. Street will have such fun. Mind how you swing your tail. Swing your tail in the after hold. Mind how you swing your tail. Swing last night and the night before. Mind how you swing your tail. Mind how you swing your tail. I just want to know if there's anybody here from the Gallagher family? Gallagher? The Gallaghers? Okay. Are you going to do your thing? You, no, you guys go ahead. You were going to introduce Jay? Oh, yeah, Jay. Jay, would you like to do the Gold Crusaders? Well, if you want. I would love you to do the Gold Crusaders. I'm going to read a little bit from Helen's Blue Nose Ghosts because it sets, it's going to set up a song and uh, this is really cool. One of the best known stories of haunted ships is that of the sailing vessel, the Charles Haskell. Its strange story made such an impression at the time that a song was made up about it. And to this day, it's sung in many ports all over the maritime provinces and the New England states. Two men from Lockport, Nova Scotia, and one from Lunenburg were in her crew, and the rest were Gloucester men. And this is her story, according to an account from the Boston Globe at that time, and shown to me, me being Helen Creighton, in a scrapbook at Annapolis Royal, where the vessel was well known later on. The Charles Haskell, a fine new vessel, 
sailed out of Boston and was one of 300 anchored on George's Bank on March 7, 1866. A hurricane and blind, blinding storms set in. Vessels were huddled together and were torn from their anchorage. And during the hurricane, all hands, of course, were on the deck. At one o'clock at night, one of the other ships, a schooner, got adrift and out of control. And she was like a runaway and was being hurled by the storm directly towards the Haskell. In order to save herself, the Haskell's ropes were cut. And then she was so storm-driven that then she was completely at the mercy of the wind. Another craft lay directly in her path and she ran through it like a cheese, standing the shock herself without losing a rope yarn. Thus, the Charles Haskell unwittingly transferred to the Andrew Jackson of Salem what would have been her fate. In time, the Charles Haskell returned to the same fishing grounds. Then a very strange thing happened, and all the crew testified that it was true, for when they sailed over the place where they had rammed the Andrew Jackson, the crew of that schooner came right up over the sides in their oilskins and manned the Haskell. After that, the Haskell became known as the ghost vessel, and the owners were never able to obtain a crew. You may all smile if you want to, but perhaps you'll lend an ear, for it's men and boys together. Well, on for 50 years, I've sailed upon the ocean in summer's pleasant days, and through the stormy winter when the howling winds did rage. There I've seen times, I tell you, when things looked rather blue, but somehow I was always quite lucky and got through. I will not brag, however, I won't say much, but then I am not much easier frightened than most of other men. A Latin night as we were sailing, we were offshore a ways. I never will forget it in all my mortal days. Twas in the grand dog watches I felt a thrilling dread come over me as if I heard one calling from the dead. Well, right over our rail there clambered, all silent. One by one, a dozen dripping sailors just wait till I have done. Their faces were pale and sea wan shone through the ghostly night. Each fellow took his station as if he had the right. Well, they moved about before us till land was most in sight. Or rather, I should say so, the lighthouse shone its light, and then those ghostly sailors moved to the rail again and vanished in an instant before the sons of men. Well, we sailed right in the harbor, and every mother's son will tell you the same story, the same as I have done. The trip before the other, we were on George's then. We ran down another vessel, and we sank her and her men. And those were the same poor fellows. I hope God rest their souls, that on our old craft we ran over and sank on George's shoals. Well, now you've heard my story, it is just as I say. I do believe in spirits until this very day. We are recognizing our Acadian heritage today, and we're tremendously pleased to have a longtime supporter of our society here with us this evening, Yvette D'Entremont. Bienvenue. Yvette, 
Thank you. I am so honored to be here, and I know my grandmère, Lori Ren McNeil, who was a potier, and she was a great contributor to Helen's Acadian part of her collection. Um, everyone, the, the older folks from home, remember Helen coming around with all her recording devices, this lady coming around to record all the songs and the stories from, uh, from the, the tradition bearers, as we call them. And uh, as of late, I am now a grandmother. And uh, when I was younger, of course, my mom used to sing the lullaby that Grandmère Laurie sang. I have since sung it to my granddaughter. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, I just recently sang it in France. Um, I've just been back from an Acadian week in Normandy where I sang the lullaby that Grandmère has in the collection, in Helen Creighton's collection, and I will sing that to you. Dor, 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 dor le beau petit bibi à maman. Demain si fait beau, j'irai sur grand-mère. Dor, dor le petit bibi. Dor, 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 dor le beau petit bibi à maman. Thank you. Um, just a little added note. Um, that lullaby, dor, dor, petit bibi, sleep my baby. Um, the mothers would, of course, the intention is getting your baby to go to sleep, but of course, the mothers, without interrupting this whole rocking motion, would just invent the words as they came to their head. So that, that's how this, this, this one works. Uh, thank you, Clary and Sharon. Thank you for inviting us here. This is very special. I know my mom would have loved this if she was here. And. Uh, this collection is going to be fantastic um, to ac access um, for everybody. Thank you so much. I first have to ask if anybody is here from the Gallagher family. Is anybody here from the Gallagher family? No. Early one morning, one morning in spring, to hear the birds whistle and nightingale sing, I spied a fair damsel who sweetly did sing, I'm going to be married on Monday morning. Monday morning, Monday morning, I'm going to be married on Monday morning. Monday morning, Monday morning, I'm going to be married on Monday morning. You know, I really was married on a Monday morning. Yes. I, Catherine Marion Scott Gallagher, was married to my Ed on a Monday morning on November 27th, 1928. Yes. The same date as my dear parents in 1874. And I was so thrilled to get married at the same date as my parents. But um, it's interesting because I almost didn't get married because of the fire. My dear parents, God rest their souls, they weren't dead more than two years when their house caught on fire with their two bachelor sons inside. But luckily, luckily they escaped. But not so my wedding trousseau. 
Nope, the sheets, the towels, the tablecloths, the napkins, all the linens, and my wedding clothes, all burnt to a crisp in the fire. But luckily, I had a sister in the Boston States, and she was a seamstress, so I quickly went down to visit her, and we sewed, and we sewed, and we sewed, and we sewed, and pretty soon we had our old, old, my own trousseau remade and ready to go, ready to be married. And it took months to do that, and poor Ed, well, he was back home, but he was very patiently waiting for me. And I have to say that I really missed dear Ed. He, I missed his laughter, I missed his stories, and I missed dancing with him. Do, 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 do. I, I loved singing that song. Oh, I sung that song today on the radio, on the CBC radio. Oh, I was so thrilled all over. Me, me, Mrs. Edward Gallagher sang on the radio. Yeah, it was very exciting. I sang alongside the professionals and I got paid the same as the professionals, a whole ten dollars. <laughs> but you know, it was all because of Helen Creighton. I remember that day about two years ago, it was an, a Saturday in August of 1936 when Helen Creighton and Doreen Sr. came to the lighthouse, Shabukto Head Lighthouse, my home, at the head of Halifax Harbor. And they came and they were looking for uh, ballads and some of the old songs, and they asked if I knew songs with milk white steeds in them or with uh, songs with broken rings. And I said, well, my mother taught me some of those lovelies. I could sing you one now. I know the Seven Long Years song, which is a broken ring song. They were very excited. And so I said to them, the only problem is that it's a Saturday and I gotta scrub my kitchen floor because company comes on Sunday. They always come on Sunday. And I, can, I have to get my work done, but I can sing you that song while I'm scrubbing my floor. So I mopped my floor and I sang this song. As a sailor walked all in a garden, a fair young maiden I chanced to spy. It was for to view her, he stepped up to her and said, young lady, can you fancy I? Oh, fancy you, a man of honor, a maid of honor I'll ever be. For I am waiting for a sailor whose home is far across the sea. It's seven years since my love has left me, and seven years since I did him see. Another seven, I'll wait upon him. Perhaps he'll come back and marry me. What if your lover, well, he is married and is enjoying wedded bliss? What if your lovey is dead and buried? The cruel ocean lies o'er his breast. Well, if he's married, I hope he's happy. And if he's dead, well, I wish him rest. But it is for his sake I'll never marry. The reason why is I love him best. What if I be your single sailor? The one you don't expect me to be. What if I be your own true lover who has come back for to marry thee? Well, if you be my single sailor, the one I don't expect you to be, show me the ring that was broke between us. And when I see it, I will believe. He put his hand all in his bosom, his fingers being both brown and small. He pulled out the token between them broken, and when she saw it, 
she down did fall. He picked her up all in his arms and said, fair lady, I'm none the worse, for I have plenty of gold and silver. The cruel ocean I'll never more cross. such a romantic song. Can you imagine being a teenager and your, your young man goes off to sea and he's gone so long that, well, you would have changed in appearance. I mean, the woman, she would have been, her long maiden-like hair would have been done up and put under a hat. She would have had womanly curves by now. Her hands would have been Oh, tanned from working in the garden or calloused from doing housework. And the young man, well, when he came back, he, he would perhaps have a beard. He would have hands that were curled and brown from pulling on the ropes. And his skin would be tanned all over. And muscles, my goodness, he would have muscles. <laughs> but you know, it's no wonder they didn't recognize each other. And sometimes the sailors didn't come back at all. Like in the war over 20 years ago, so many did not return. You know, life is so unexpected and unpredictable, both happy and sad. Come all ye old comrades, come now let us join. Come blend your sweet voices in chorus with mine. We'll drink and be merry while sorrows refrain. We may now and may never all meet here again. Oh my goodness, look at the time. Oh, deuce take Mrs. Grundy. I better get uh, these clothes put away and my house dress put on and, and uh, my apron, because Max, or sorry, Ed, I forgot my husband's name. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Ed will be back <laughs> pretty soon from the Foghorn building. But my boys, my dear boys will be with him. My dear boys, Don and Max and Babs. So, you know what? I think I'd better go and rustle up some cookies for their bed lunch. <laughs> We've got a couple of our stalwart supporters of Helen Creighton Folklore Society that came to us today all the way from River John. David Farrell, uh, well, the, I guess the Strange Valentines is, is, is what you guys are known by. Should, should, I, should I really read the blurb I have here? Uh, nah. Janet Mills and David Farrell, also known as the Strange Valentines, have recorded a lot of Helen Creighton's material. So with a little luck, maybe they're going to share some of it tonight. But anyway, let's welcome David and Janet and the strange Valentine's. Thanks, John. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a very exciting night. Um, this is uh, our version of uh, Lady Isabel and the Elf Knight. And uh, we took it from Helen Creighton's collection. I believe it was Dennis Smith that sang it as the version we chose. And I think he's mentioned here, as, uh, even his picture somewhere I saw. So you can find him. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. Anyway, this is our version. Stop. 
daughter belong to North Cumberland, belong to North Cumberland. He courted part of the summer season, a part of the winter courted he, and all that he courted this family for was to take her sweet life away. To take her sweet love away Oh, give me half of your father's gold And part of your mother's fee oh, We will away to a foreign country Married we will be
Alan's got the milk white steed in it, of course, and some. This next one um, that we thought we'd try is one from um, the tradition bearer who contributed so much, um, so many songs, as many of them did, to Helen's collection, Ben Hanenberry. And he's on the wall here somewhere, too. And uh, this one is called uh, Lord Randall. And apparently, from what I understand, Lord Randall was, uh, I think he was Thomas Randall. And he was the nephew of Robert the Bruce. And he was poisoned. And this song came out of that. Now, it's interesting because this song, as sung by Mr. Ben Hanenberry, speaks of Henry. And I didn't really understand that, but I think over time, there was another story of King Henry I also being poisoned, and it may have sort of evolved as some of these songs do. But it goes back far. So think of all that history. This is called Lord Randall.
these old songs. I feel like these songs have such a connection to the past. I almost feel like I could be in the room with the people that sang them, uh, the people that lived the life that, you know, these ballads were a part of their lives. And I'd love to know them. So it feels a little bit like connecting with those people, I think. This, this one, this is the last one I think we're going to do. And then hopefully we have lots more music coming up. But this one is called Hindhorn. It's part of a huge story. I think, I believe it comes from the 13th century. Ah, oh, and I can't remember the lady that sang it for Helen. It's just evading me. But it's a lovely song. It's, it's a bit of a romantic song. And it's, it's about a ring that, and it's another ring story that, um, well, you'll see what happens. If the ring gets pale and worn, then she's with somebody else and he's got to come back and figure it all out. Hindhorn. after that song. stood on the 
the steps and leaned on the gate. Soon a fair maiden came tripping down the stage. Rings on her fingers, gold in her ears. A glass of wine in her right hand. She gave it to the poor old beggar. Out of the glass he drank the wine And into the glass he dropped the ring She said, where did you get it on sea or on land? Or did you take it off some dead man's hand? Well, I did not get it on sea or on land I did not take it off a dead man's hand It's a token of love when we court it so gay Now I return it on your wedding day Well, rings from her finger she did pull off Gold from her ears she did let fall Saying, Willie, I will love you forever, evermore. Oh, we might have to beg from door to door. Between the kitchen and the hall. Willie let the poor beggar suit them fall His clothes and steel shone beyond them all He was the finest looking young man in the hall Early in the morning just to break up day They both went to church, made no delay now they are married, living hand in hand And no more is he called the old beggar man No more is he called the old beggar man Thank you. Jana Mills and David Farrell, The Strange Valentines. Our next singer carries the tradition of the Miramichi. Not that many years ago, and nobody here can claim this, she introduced the, the traditions of maritime music to none other than the couple who are now King Charles and Queen Camilla. Welcome, Melanie Ross Green. Well, thank you very much. John asked me to sing a little at the last minute, and I was at a sea shanty festival all weekend, so as you can imagine, I said, can I go into the washroom and check and see if I have a voice first? So I have a little bit of a voice. But I'm going to sing a song that I heard when I was 16 years old at the Miramichi Folk Song Festival, sung by our very own friend, Clary Croft, who is, is a friend to all, and I, I gave him a big compliment in speaking with someone saying, even when you feel you're very inept at something, Clary makes you feel like you are marvelous. Isn't that true? <laughs> and that song, that 16-year-old girl, that was almost 40 years ago when I heard this song, and I was captivated by it. And since I've sung this song in many places around the world, including Ireland, and I sang this song uh, one night, and a couple came over and said, we haven't heard that song in 40 years. 
And just recently at the Sea Shanty Festival, I heard it by another couple by the name, uh, well, Julia and Fred from a group called Castle Bay, and it was so fascinating. Their, their version is from Maine, and it's from the male perspective, and it was completely, uh, some of the things were the same, and the chorus was almost the same, but it really goes to show how important it is that Helen, create, Helen collected these songs in the form that they were. And it was Judson and Alistair Armstrong in the New Ross area that originally um, sang this song for Helen. So we'll give it a go, see if I have a voice left. I once knew a maiden whose fortune was so, fell in love with a sailor, a young sailor boy. She courted him dearly by night and by day, till at length this young sailor, he sailed miles away. I know you know it. Then if I were a blackbird, I'd whistle and sing. I would follow the ship that my true love sailed in. And on the top rigging, I'd there build my nest. And I flutter my wings o'er his lily-white breast. Now my true love is handsome in every degree. My parents despise him because he loves me. But let them despise him or say what they will. Well, there's life in my bosom. I love the lad still. Then if I were a blackbird, I'd whistle and sing. I would follow the ship that my true love sailed in. And on the top rigging, I'd there build my nest. And I flutter my wings or his lily white breast. Now if I were a scholar, could handle a pen, one long loving letter unto him I'd send. I would tell him my sorrow, my grief and my woe. And if I ever find him, I would crown him with gold. Then if I were a blackbird, I'd whistle and sing. I would follow the ship that my true love sails in. And on the top rigging, I'd there build my nest. And I flutter my wings o'er his lily-white breast. Thank you. Now, apparently, when Helen collected this from Judson and Alistair, they sang very, very still. They were very straight, and they did not move. And I cannot imagine singing that song without moving. And you did a beautiful job. I'm going to try one more song that I sang at the Sea Shanty Festival because I was really interested. I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a lot of sea shanties about men. A lot of sea shanties about men. So this is, a, this is a song of the sea collected by Helen, and I wish I could tell you who it was collected from. Maybe Claire can tell us after. Um, but it's a song about a woman who dressed up to be a man to go to sea. And the chorus is Doralea Laddie, Doralea Alilio. So I'm sure you can catch on. You're a very intelligent group, I can tell. So here we go. See if I can remember the words. Johnny's gone a sailor with trouble on his mind for relieving of his country and his darling girl behind. Dora Lee, a laddie, Dora Lee, my lily, oh, I'll give you a go. Dora Lee, a laddie, Dora Lee, my lily, oh. Before you get on board, sir, your name I'd like to know. With a smile upon her countenance, she answered John Monroe. Dora Lee, a laddie, Dora Lee, my lily, oh. 
Your waisted is quite slender, your fingers they are small, and your cheeks they are too rosy for to face a cannonball. Dora Lee, a laddie, Dora Lee, my lily o. My waisted is quite slender, my fingers they are small, but I'll never faint nor falter should ten thousand round me fall. Dora Lee, a laddie, Dora Lee, my lily o. Well, I am not your daughter, her name I do not know, for I've just come from the battlefield, my name is Jack Monroe, Dora Lee, a laddie, Dora Lee, my lily go, Dora Lee, a laddie, Dora Lee, my lily go. And we always end the song in a marriage with a hoop. Ah, Thank you very much. <laughs> Melanie is now the director of the uh, Miramichi Folk Song Festival, the oldest folk song festival in the nation. I'm chuffed because we have two very, very special guests with us tonight. One I just found out was here with us, and another is a, is a longtime friend. But first of all, I'd like to have you uh, Acknowledge, is he sitting there? Oh, there he is, way in the back there. Eddie Dornan. Eddie Dornan. Wave. Wave to us, Eddie. Yeah. So, you're very welcome. And I have to tell you, Eddie Dornan is in the Creighton Collection. Go there and look him up. He's singing with his father, Angelo Dornan. If you would permit me, I would like to sing one of your father's songs. Oh, I would love to introduce that. It's one of my favorite all-time songs. Angelo Dornan was the man responsible for the vast percentage of the songs existed in Helen Creighton's Folk Songs of Southern New Brunswick. He was a wonderful singer. Helen stayed with his family. Uh, Eddie probably can corner him someplace and he can tell you stories of when Helen came and stayed with the family. But this, I think, is one of the most beautiful songs in Helen's collection. And Eddie, I'd like to dedicate it to you. And I, I'm just thrilled that you drove all the way from Prince Edward Island to come over here to this event. When I wake in the morning, I go to my window. I take a long look over the place that I know. I'm surrounded by sorrow, will I never see tomorrow? Oh, Jimmy, lovely Jimmy, if you knew what I know. When the boys come to court me, they all say they love me. But I, like a hero, I do them disdain. My love's gone and left me, no other man shall get me. And I never will marry. Till he comes back again. Thank you, Eddie, and thank you for coming all the way from Prince Edward Island. Now, did you want to? Thank you for that. Oh, you're very welcome. Super, super good. Very welcome. Michael. Very good. Very good. Thank you. You want to sing a song? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other person I want to introduce you to, I. I've been getting a lot of kudos here today, and I stand on some pretty big shoulders. And one of those shoulders that I stand on is my friend Kay Potty. I first knew her when she was Kay Dimmick. She worked directly with Helen Creighton. She sang in a folk group that Helen Creighton collected, uh, uh, assembled. They went to uh, Ottawa for the centennial. Not only that, but when Kay came back to this area, she became the director of music for the Halifax School of Music Department, 
And through her efforts and music teachers like Martha Healy and Joyce Pierce and Reet Vink, they kept the Helen Creighton repertoire alive in the school system. And Kate is a wonder, uh, Kay is a wonderful singer herself. Uh, we've had some, some good parties down the years, I can remember too. But I think she also has a, a partner in crime. I think her, her partner Brian is going to sing the song with her. So if you would please welcome Kay and Brian. Thank you, Clary. One of the greatest pleasures in my life was doing some uh, illustrated lectures with Helen. And she would introduce the songs and tell the background. And then I would sing, and, and some of the other, some of Clary did too, and uh, uh, some of my other colleagues. And uh, so it was, it was wonderful that, that rapport that we had and just working with her. And uh, it, I, I count it as one of my pleasures in this life. And that was 50 plus years ago. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to sing one of the songs that she always wanted me to sing in her one of her uh, lectures. And uh, it, uh, it, I think it, was, it came from uh, Mrs. Ward in Wolfville and she had an English background, so it, it was the background of the song is English. And um, anyway, it, it, it's a very serious song. And my husband is going to come in on the, the chorus, and then you can come in on the chorus if you feel like it. Timmy, I, Timmy, I, Timmy, I, Timmy, I, Timmy, I, Okay, here we go. My grandma lived on yonder little green, as fine an old lady as ever was seen. But she often cautioned me with care of all faults, young men to beware. Timmy, I, Timmy, I, Timmy, yumpa tumpa ta. Of all faults, young men to beware. These faults, young men, they'll flatter and deceive. And so, my love, you must not believe. They'll flatter, they'll coax till you are in the snare. And away goes poor old grandma's care. Timmy, I, Timmy, I, Timmy, yumpa tumpa ta. And away goes poor old grandma's care. The first that came according was little Johnny Green, as fine a young fellow as ever was seen. But the words of my grandma rang in my head, and I could not hear one word he said. Timmy, I, Timmy, I, Timmy, umpa tumpa ta. And I could not hear one word he said. The next that came according was young Ellis Grove. Twas then we met with a joyous love. With a joyous love, I couldn't be afraid. You better get married than die an old maid. Timmy, I, Timmy, I, Timmy, umpa tumpa ta. You better get married than die an old maid. Thinks I to myself, there must be some mistake. What a fuss these old folk make. If the boys and the girls had all been so afraid, then Grandma herself would have died an old maid. Timmy, I, Timmy, I, Timmy, umpa tumpa ta. The Grandma herself would have died an old maid. <laughs> Our next uh, singer plays a very important role in continuing Helen's tradition. Mary Knickel teaches young people and brings the traditions that Helen has collected alive and keeps them going through generations, generations and generations. So glad she could make it here tonight. Mary Knickel, thank you Mary, come on up. Thank you. Um, I didn't know it was open mic, and when I saw it, it's, it's so wonderful to listen to all these songs. Um, I grew up in them. My mother got one of the first books, and she was a singer, and um, she sang them to me, and I learned them. And of course, I can't think of very many. Um, I just wanted to say that my students, some of the favorite songs were sung tonight. They love uh, When I Wake in the Morning, and they love the... Um, the one about the 
fly to his lily white breast. But I'm going to just do a simple song because the song I was going to do was sung. I'm just going to do the beautiful song because this is another one of their favorites and my favorite, Hills, Hills and Glens. <clears throat> The hills and glens that I love well, the rolling surf that charms me, the lake with speckled trout lies still, and all is peace around me. In summer warm and winter cold and fog and storm and sunshine, whatever its mood, my heart is there and will remain for all time. The hills and glens that I love well, the rolling surf that charms me, the lake with speckled trout lies still, and all is peace around me. Thank you. I know I forgot a verse. I forgot a verse. Thank you so much, Mary. That was that was wonderful. Keep those young voices going. We we love to hear them. They all First Thursday of every month, the uh, Helen Creighton Folklore Society uh, hosts an event at Evergreen, Helen's House in Dartmouth, called Folk Club, Helen Creighton Folk Club. Uh, Joanne Peppers is, is here tonight. She, uh, she keeps Evergreen running, and it, it's just so rewarding to be able to come and hear the music that Helen collected in Helen's House and to hear music that she would have loved, the new music that we, we hear there is, is such a, a blessing for us all. But the, the traditions uh, of the Helen Creighton collection are rooted so deep in the Maritimes and certainly uh, at sea. So things, uh, I think we're going to wind things down tonight. We're going to close with uh, a piece that uh, Jay Perry is going to do from the Creighton collection. This is found in various collections around the world, actually. But this uh, version, uh, Poor Old Man, is uh, from the Creighton collection. Jay Perry, come on up. This song has its origins in a much, much older sea shanty that describes a ceremonial ritual aboard ships. But the version that Helen Cree collected, um, she collected in 1950, this, the same year that Clary was born. <laughs> um, and it, it has been twisted and co-opted into a modern, uh, read, you know, uh, pre-First World War, uh, use, uh, and it um, uh, it describes um, sort of dinner on um, early early ships, just basically post sailing ships, um, and in that era, the the shipping companies would uh, feed their crews the cheapest possible food they could get, and what meat was cheaper and more readily available at the age of the dawning of the, uh, of the automobile than horse meat. And so apparently they ate a lot of horse meat. And uh, Tom Corneli says that, um, uh, well, well, I'll tell you that in a minute. I'll sing the song first. 
a poor old man came a-riding by. They say so, and I know so. I says, old man, your horse will die. Poor old man, and if he dies, we'll tan his hide. I say so, and I know so. And if he dies, we'll tan his skin. Poor old man. The sailors they do me despise, they say so, and I know so, they turn me over and damn me eyes, poor old man, old horse, old horse, what brought you here, I say so, and I know so, you're plowed the ground for many the year, poor old man. Till killed by blows and hard abuse. I say so, and I know so. You're salted down for sailors' use. Poor old man. The sailors, they do me despise. I say so, and I know so. They turn me over and damn me eyes. Poor old man. They eat my meat and pick my bones. I say so, and I know so and pitch the rest to Davy Jones, poor old man. And it's at that point on the recording, Tom Corneli explains to Helen Creighton that they would use this as a grace before and after meals that contained horse meat. <laughs> and they would say, old horse, old horse, what brought you here? You're plowed the ground for many of the year. Till killed by blows and hard abuse, you're salted down for sailors' use. The sailors, they do me despise. They turn me over and damn my eyes. They eat my meat and pick my bones and pitch the rest to Davy Jones. Amen. We cannot end an evening dedicated to Helen Creighton without one song that I guarantee you all know. And I'm asking Clary to come forth and lead us in. Anybody else that wants to come up and sing too? We can have more people. Farewell to Nova Scotia. That is in the room. But if you want to come up and sing, please do. Because this is the backdrop. The, it's on the wall behind us. Martha, you want to come up and sing with us? Come on, Martha. Yeah. Okay, you want to come up and sing Farewell to Nova Scotia? Anybody? Pat? Any, everybody come everybody up. Everybody come up. Yeah, the whole room come this up. This is our song. Yeah, everybody come up. We'll form the back up here. Farewell to Nova Scotia. Now, a little, a little background, special background on this song. You see, the, you see the notation there, 1933, August the 4th. 90 years ago this year is when Helen Creighton first sat with Anne Greeno and heard this song for the first time. And the notations were written down by her friend, uh, Helen's friend, Doreen Sr. And at another part in the, the, the notation that they did, Doreen wrote about this song, interesting song might be useful someday. <laughs> There are several different versions. Sadly, Helen did not have recording equipment suitable to capture Mrs. Greeno's voice in 1933, but if you look online, there are two or three other people singing the song later on when she had it. Sometimes the melody changes a little bit, but um, we're, just gonna, we're just gonna get into this. The sun was setting in the west, the birds were singing on every tree. All nature seemed inclined for a rest, but still there was no rest for me. Farewell to Nova Scotia, the sea-bound coast. Let your mountains dark and dreary be. For when I am far away on the briny ocean tossed, will you ever heave a sigh or a wish for me? I have two brothers and they are at rest. Their arms are folded on their breast. 
But a poor simple sailor just like me must be tossed and driven on the dark blue sea. Farewell to Nova Scotia, the sea-bound coast. Let your mountains dark and dreary be. For when I am far away on the briny ocean toss, will you ever heave a sigh and a wish for me? I grieve to leave my native land. I grieve to leave my comrades all. And my parents, whom I have always held so dear, and the bonny, bonny lass that I do adore. Farewell to Nova Scotia, the sea-bound coast. Let your mountains dark and dreary be. For when I'm far away on the briny ocean toss, will you ever heave a sigh or a wish for me? The drums they do beat and the wars do alarm. The captain calls, we must obey. So farewell, farewell to Nova Scotia's charms, for it's early in the morning and I'm far, far away. Farewell to Nova Scotia, the sea-bound coast. Let your mountains dark and drear I be. For when I am far away on the briny ocean toss, will you ever heave a sigh or a wish for me? Will you ever heave a sigh or a wish for me? I have to, I just, I just want to tell you one other thing before we let you go. Traditional singers never sang the last line of a song again. As, as, uh, as Cindy pointed out when she sang the Catherine Gallagher song, they spoke the last line very often. So that tagline that we do, that everybody knows, the slowing down the farewell to Nova Scotia, will you ever hear Versailles or a wish for me, was not part of the kind of collecting that Helen did. So in the 1960s, very early 1960s, when she went down with the CBC, Mrs. Mrs. Greeno was gone, but she had Freeman Young who sang a version of it. And he was recorded, and he sang the song, and he did the tagline. And Helen went up to him afterwards, and she said, Now, Free, when I was down here 20 years ago, you didn't sing it that way. And Freeman said, No, but that's the way I heard Kathleen McKinnon sing it on the television, so it must be right. <laughs> so the collection continues. The collection is there for everybody. Patty, all the archive staff, all the tradition bearers who are being honored in this room, the special guests who arrived and came all the way from Pubnico and Prince Edward Island. This has just been a marvelous, marvelous event, and it's only, only the beginning. You will go down the rabbit hole in that sucker for years. Thank you. <laughs>